To be a good snooker player, you have to be able to do everything well, from potting to playing safe. This involves acquiring a whole range of skills like being able to escape from snookers, but some of these skills are far more vital than others. So here are the three most overpowered tips and tricks for heavy break building. This is Break From Life. Welcome back and it's your first time watching one of our videos and it's fantastic to have you here. Break building is unquestionably the area of the game that Stephen Hendry took advantage of most during the peak of his career, effectively shutting opponents completely out of the game. The problem is, although this is the most effective way to play snooker, it's incredibly difficult to do and involves getting a lot of things right. A lot of players will tell you they struggle to break build, but if you can just do these three things well, all that can very quickly change. We're not actually talking here about improving your ability to play snooker, almost the opposite. Hopefully if this works it's simply going to make the game easier to play for people like you and to Thomas from Rotterdam in the Netherlands which literally could be anywhere. But first you need to understand where you need to be for these basic tricks to work. I describe this as a level one shot. A shot where the pot and position are difficult and not guaranteed but you do have a pot on. If you don't let's call that level zero. I'd describe a level 2 shot where the pot's straightforward but the position's difficult, where the pot's difficult but the position's simple, or a combination of the two. But for a second we should focus on a position that we need and should want to be in. This is the sort of position that you find you're only left in or you manage to get into about once a frame. You have one chance like this every single frame and you've got to make it count. And once you've gone into this position, you've got to stay here because this is a position where breaks happen. This is what I describe as position level 3 and believe it or not, you only have to be able to play two basic shots well to have significant success from these positions. A controlled run through shot and a straight stun shot. So how does it work? And just with those two simple shots we can now start to do something a little bit clever. You see. If we want to get the cue ball to finish on that piece of paper, which isn't the easiest thing to do in the world, what we've got to do is decide on the right pace to play the shot at, and then just not change your minds. And in that way, eventually over time, you'll learn how hard to play a positional shot. But what if that wasn't the first shot? I mean, what if we started here? To finish on the piece of paper we need to finish straight on the red, so to do that all we need to do is play a straight stun shot and then we can just run through onto the piece of paper. With a third red we now have to run through to leave ourselves straight on the second red which can allow us to play the stun shot and run through onto the piece of paper. Now this is where things really get interesting. You see, if I pot, just pot this red, I can finish straight on this one, which is fantastic because I've got a straightforward pot, but that means the white will be coming over here and I won't be able to finish straight on this red, which is where I needed to finish to get a straight shot on that red to finish on the piece of paper. So that's not gonna work. So what I'm gonna have to do here is just stun this red in, leaving the cube roughly where the red is, so I've got the right angle to pot this red, finish straight on that red, and finish straight on that red. Playing the game like this means you'll always have the most simple shots possible, and if you're more likely to pot the balls, then it's just more likely you'll do well. It's almost like juggling. The longer that I can time the order of where all the balls are going, the longer I can keep them in the air for. So that being said, how well does it work in an actual game? So I've got a chance and I'm in what I described earlier as position level 3, so I've got as much control as I'm ever going to have over both the pot and the positional shot. So what I'm going to do here, instead of playing the red, I'm going to be thinking about playing the black. Now I still need to concentrate on the red and make sure I pot it, but all my thought needs to be on what I'm going to do on the black. Now what I want to do on the black is finish up here on these two reds. So when I pot the black, come off the top cushion, through here, and finish on those two reds. To do that, I need the right angle. And the right angle involves leaving the cue ball here. So what I'm looking to do is just pot the red, play a stun shot, that's gonna leave me the right angle to come up here. But it's not quite as simple as that, because that's not quite the perfect angle. Ideally, I want to be here. Now there's things I can do if I finish in the wrong place, but ideally if I can get exactly there, so just bring the cue ball back a little bit, I'm going to have the perfect angle 
on the black to get onto those two reds. And it's these little tiny margins that make all the difference. So I'm thinking about just potting that red and running through it here on the black. So I'm playing it for the next red. So I'm through the gap and that's absolutely perfect. What we're going to do is play for this one, not take any chances and to do that we want to be playing the black from here. So we're thinking about potting the black and getting on here on this red. It's absolutely critical to play these shots at the right pace. The further I am out with this shot the more likely it is I'll miss the next red. Now I'm thinking about potting the red and going up for the blue. Don't worry if things go wrong from time to time, because they will, but if you've got a plan, you're making it far more likely that things are going to go right. So on this shot, I'm thinking about potting the blue and coming down for this red. However, this is a slightly harder shot than I've shown you before, because if I just pot it, I'm going to hit the blue. So I'm going to have to play it as a stun shot at an angle. So I'm just going to strike the cue ball slightly lower, and it's going to come this side of the blue. I'm just thinking about getting it in the right place to get on that red. This is only really making it harder to control the cue ball though. So thinking about playing red to black here. Because the red's over this side and we can't finish over this side of the table and finish on the red, we're going to need to finish very straight on the black because we, there's no good leaving ourselves too much angle in this shot. And that means we have to now play probably the hardest shot we've played, and that's a screw shot. It's amazing how easily we could move the cue ball around the table there just by playing two basic shots. Now obviously this isn't the easiest thing to do and does require a lot of practice, but we can look at what to practice towards the end of the video. And don't worry, it's okay because Galdan is from Alabatar in Mongolia, and I can't think of a song reference. When we're talking about break building, what we really want is control. And this is a little shot that gives you more control in a break than any other. It doesn't matter what I play here, there's no way I can avoid the reds. It doesn't matter what I do, I'm always going to hit them. Unless I play it as a slow screw shot, a shot that gives me more control over the cue ball than any other. So to play this shot, what you're looking to do is strike the cue ball as low and slow as you possibly can and still generate backspin. And the way you do that is by producing the smoothest contact possible between your tip and the cue ball. The longer the contact is, the more spin you're going to produce. You just want as smooth as possible. And then you can generate more and more backspin. And the more backspin you can produce like this, the more control you're going to have over the cue ball and the bigger breaks you're going to get. This shot actually shows exactly what I'm talking about because it's so thin it doesn't make much difference if I play the shot as a run through, a stun shot or even play a screw shot. I can't really seem to hit the reds. But if I play the shot slowly and with maximum backspin it gives the cue ball a chance to grip the cloth and make the cannon. This shot is great in break building because it allows you to hold the cue ball better than you think you can so we'll look at how to practice it later. But first we have to find out if I know the way to Squirrel Patrick in San Jose, Costa Rica. There's also something very vital you have to do if you're not in perfect position like this. This is what I described earlier as third level position. You know, it's a brilliant chance and you just got to take advantage of it. But quite often you'll find yourself somewhere like here. And we don't quite have such a good chance. There's potential to get the same chance we just had, but we've got to pot a good pot first and get nicely in position and this is where the problems start. Converting a chance in which you're only left in what I'm describing as second level position is one of the most vital and underlooked areas of the game. This has the potential to seriously increase the amount of chances you get in the balls but you have to get something right first. So as you saw there on the red I played I didn't quite get in perfect position and that meant on the next blue Instead of trying to play a positional shot from the blue to a red, I just played it slow and hoped for the best. And as you can see, it didn't work out. And you'd be surprised, even in that sort of a situation, how many times it actually goes wrong. And I've ended up with a harder shot than I had to start off with. This is why it's absolutely vital every time you come to the table to try and play a positional shot. Because otherwise, 
you find you very quickly run out of position. I'm not saying you should risk missing the pot, but if you're not playing a positional shot of some kind, then you're not going to end up with the chances you need to win games. You still need to attack. Here's a great example of that. I'm on a fairly comfortable red, but getting out for the black will be possibly almost impossible because it's absolutely straight. So instead, what I'm going to do is work out where the white's going to go when I pop the black. So if I'm here somewhere, the chances are I'm going to cannon that red. So if I can leave the cue ball roughly there, I'm going to be able to finish on that red. It's going to require two good pots, but at least it is possible. This is what I mean when I say you have to try and play a positional shot so every single time. Because even when I play a shot here, if you don't do this, then you're going to have to play multiple good pots and the game becomes almost impossible to play. The best way to practice putting backspin on the ball is to play repetitive, just off straight shots and try and play them better and better every time. This is something that even experienced players have to gradually build up to. This little routine teaches you everything you need to know about cue ball control. You have to pot all four reds in order without hitting any cushions and potting all the balls in the top pockets. One poor positional shot and it can all go wrong very quickly. Practicing repetitive reds and blacks like this is great for every other type of shot around the black spot. You can place the red halfway between the pink and black spot or any other place on the table that you're struggling to get the position from the black. This can really help you gain confidence with shots you're struggling with. Clearing the colours is actually quite difficult to do if you don't know exactly where you need the cue ball. So it's a great idea to practice it regularly and try practicing clearing the colours backwards to make it even harder in one long continuous break. This routine is actually as simple as it gets, but it's a great way to do something that's absolutely vital when you're practicing playing snooker. Getting used to and feeling comfortable playing a large number of shots consecutively. Because snooker has some real problems, so why not try and find out what the real problem with snooker is? Or find out more about angles in snooker with snooker angles. And remember, don't just watch play and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.